I know what you're thinking, surely you're not going to expand that series of cosines and sines, and I am, and stop calling me Shirley. So I12 is now 2 epsilon naught C E naught 1 dotted with E naught 2 of a giant time average. <coughs> so the first terms are cosine alpha, cosine beta, and those are times the cosine squared omega t. They each had their own omega t, so they're cosine squared omega t. And then the other term at the end would be sine alpha, sine beta, sine squared omega t. Each one of those had its own sine omega t, so it's sine squared omega t. And then the cross terms, each is times sine omega t, cosine omega t. But there's two of them, so I'm going to put them together first. So we're going to keep adding this way. And the things that go in front of sine omega t, cosine omega t, if you go back and foil the whole thing, is cosine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha cosine beta. And those are times um, cosine omega t, sine omega t. So that's everything in the time average. All right? So that looks like a mess. But the reason we did it this way is because now we can break it up into individual time averages. We can time average this, and we can time average this, and we can time average that. And the time components are now alone inside of the sinusoids. So we can pull the sort of spatial components out of the time average and just take the time average of those parts. Okay? So, and those are actually well known. So the time average of cosine squared omega t is a half. So we aren't going to do the integral to prove it. You can find it. Uh, you can do the integral. You can look it up in a table. Or you can think about it. Cosine squared omega t is always greater than 1. And it oscillates uniformly between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0 and 1. So yeah, the average value probably should be a half. And keep in mind, this is the time average over many, many cycles. If you just do a little part of a cycle, you can get something else. But over many cycles, cosine squared averages to 1. And sine squared omega t over many cycles also averages to a half, right? Because if you think it oscillates between 0 and 1 symmetrically, so the average value, yeah, is probably a half. And the time average of cosine omega t sine omega t is 0. That's another reason we did it this way, is it gets rid of a lot of the stuff. And this one, if you want to picture it, imagine the plot sine omega t cosine omega t, it oscillates between positive and negative uniformly. So yes, the average value over many cycles would be zero. So since we've done that, basically this is gone and this is gone. The time averages are gone. We got it down to I12 equals 2 epsilon naught C E naught 1 dotted with E naught 2. All this just to get the two sine waves to add or subtract. I mean, it's Ridiculous. Um, this times a half plus this times a half. So I'm going to say times a half like that, and then times the sum of those two. Cosine alpha, cosine beta, and then plus here, sine alpha, sine beta. And that's no longer a time average. That's just a term. And now, oh, Rick is here. And Rick says, oh, oh, Rick is such a jerk. You played it for her, you can play it for me. If she can stand it, I can play it. And of course, he means the angle difference identity, because here, you can see now we have it in here backwards. Now, we have the 1 half and the 2 cancel, epsilon naught c, e naught 1, dotted with e naught 2. Um, times the cosine of just alpha minus beta. It's getting shorter and nicer. 
And now that we have it down to just a single little alpha and beta, we can actually write it in terms of the original properties given epsilon naught c, the two magnitude, or the two amplitude vectors dotted with each other, and then the cosine of, and let's see, this was k1 dot r plus epsilon 1 um, uh, minus, or not, not minus omega t, <laughs> k1 dot r plus epsilon 1, and then minus k2 dot r minus epsilon 2. So this I12 is the term that we now want to study and see how it shows up in different physical situations.